Hey everybody, welcome back to Bustin' Blockbusters. Wheel of Time Season 3 is coming soon. It is coming March 13th of 2025, much sooner than many content providers uh, expected until about last month or so. And then we started thinking, well, maybe it's going to start to happen. And it is. It's happening in the first quarter of 2025. I was suspecting it would be the second quarter of 2025, but this is wonderful news. And the full marketing campaign has launched. Uh, Rafe, Madeline, Madden, and Yosha Stradowski recently appeared at the Brazilian Comic Con, CCXP, where they revealed two scenes uh, that will be in the show. They revealed uh, some insights into what their characters are going through. And a teaser trailer, and that's what we're going to be breaking down today in a completely spoiler-free way. The only spoiler warning I need to give you is you probably should have seen Wheel of Time on Amazon Prime in order to get the context of what I'm going to be talking about. I won't be talking about anything regarding the books. I won't be re talking about any of that stuff. Um, I may give inform you of some names of some things but I won't be telling you any major plot points um, that might appear in season three. We'll only be analyzing the images that we've seen. That being said, Priscilla and I will be back soon with a full book spoiler warning type of analysis of what we're seeing with these shots from this teaser trailer, which was released on Saturday, December the 7th, 2024. And uh, we'll be talking about everything from the books in that particular podcast. This podcast, you don't have to worry about that. So stick around. If you're a TV only person, this is the right place for you. If you have your own thoughts about the teaser trailer, then please let me know. Matt's audio blog at gmail.com is one way you can reach me. You can find me on blue sky, Matthew dot Murdick. That's with two T's and M U R D I C K. You can still find me on the site formerly known as Twitter until January 1st of 2025, and then we will no longer uh, be active there. I won't delete the account, but I will no longer be active on the site formerly known as Twitter on the new year. Uh, that's at Bust Blockbuster. You can always reach out to Double P Media, my bosses, at all of their socials, and they have this same handle all across all of your socials. Well, except maybe OnlyFans. I don't know what Bubba's OnlyFans account name is. But otherwise, if you want to reach the podcast on all social medias, at the word double, the letters PHQ. And you can always leave comments on our videos here. This is a YouTube channel called Double P Media. So it's youtube.com slash at the word double, the letter P, the word media, all strung together. Leave me your comments. I want to know how you felt about this teaser trailer. I'm not going to delay any further. We've talked about the fact that March 13th date, um, the CCXP, they actually released some scenes. We'll be talking about those in the spoiler review uh, with Priscilla. We have episode titles. We have all this kind of great stuff, most of it which I can't get into in a spoiler-free context, so I will not attempt to do so. Let's just jump straight into the images that we see. Our first image is of a very mysterious looking place. It's got uh, fog all around it. It looks like it's kind of a modern looking kind of city, but it's set in a very wasteland kind of area. And we do have some characters that we know who are looking at this place. Um, I love the fact that there's spears all around here as well. And there is a reason for that. Um, people who go into this place don't necessarily always come out, uh, but, and they're not allowed to take their weapons in with them. So they have to leave their spears here. So if all, all these spears that you see, that means that people, uh, went in there with the intention of returning and recollecting their spears, but never came back. Um, it's foggy yet it's in a very desert area. It is sitting lower. So maybe that has something to do with it, but it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of moisture around to be collected. So that indicates to us that this is a fairly magical place. And I am going to tell you the name uh, Ruidian. I think it's the way that most people pronounce it. Uh, Ruidian is another way that I've heard it pronounced, but I'm going to say Ruidian, um, a very magical place. And there are people that we know from our story that are here. 
That is Rand standing there directly in the center. It looks like it's Moraine to his left. Um, it looks like Lan is slightly behind them. I'm going to guess that the person to the right of Rand is the Aiel Avienda. Um, and then there's other people that look dressed similarly to Avienda, which indicates to me that they are Aiel as well. And that tells you that they are in the land of the Aiel, or they're traveling with a bunch of Aiel at very least. So they're looking upon this great, wonderful, magical-looking city. Um, there is a gentleman next to Rand, and I, he is Aiel as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tell you what I think his name is. I think that is Ruark, and he is one of the clan chiefs of the Aiel. Anyway, they're overlooking this place, and uh, several people look like they have intent to go in there. I don't think they're just sightseeing. Uh, we'll get into that in a, just a little bit. The next shot is Moraine. She's hanging upside down. In this particular teaser, there are lots of shots where the camera flips and people are upside down and all those kind of things. And what they indicate is really uh, an indication that this is not quite a real place. That's what I will tell you. Um, that That it is a version of a reality that can happen or that might exist somewhere else. Think multiple universes, kind of like what MCU tried to do. Um, but these are possible alternate futures. I believe that Moraine is experiencing one of those here in this shot. She's got sand all over her face. Of course, the whole area that we've seen is very sandy. Now, this next shot is uh, three huge statues in this very, very large room where the streamlight's coming through. The architecture is very similar to the architecture we've seen in uh, in the White Tower, but I don't think this is the White Tower. I think this is, in fact, um, a, a different place and at a different time. Remember that in the history of the world, and we heard a little bit of this from the origin stories and whatever, um, when Luth first defeated the Dark One, um, then the world broke, so to speak. Uh, and meaning that there was a great kind of apocalypse that happened to the world. I believe this is from a time called the Age of Legends, which is, uh, again, before that breaking of the world. We have some figures walking through. You can see that the clothing amongst these figures everywhere, there are men and women standing around. Um, also, the images of the statues, a wider shot would reveal that some of them are male. And remember that in our current day, uh, male channelers, maybe other than Rand, are not really allowed. Uh, Leandrin goes after male channelers, as we saw in the very premiere episode of the series. Um, but here are some people walking through. Now, I've heard Amber from Road to Tarvalin say that she thinks one of these people is Rand. My images are not clear enough for me to be able to say that distinctly. I will say the person who's trailing kind of behind uh, looks a little bit like Rand, but I, I'm not completely like Rand. Um, so you would think that would put it in the modern time. Uh, but we're going to see several shots throughout this trailer where we see Rand kind of experiencing other people's lives, or at least that's the way I interpret it. And this may be one of those scenes as well. Uh, if it is the Age of Legends, it, of course, is very far in the distant past uh, from the time that we're at now. So maybe Rand is experiencing something from there. Here's a shot of Moraine. She's in Tarvalin. You can definitely tell by the architecture and everything. It looks very similar uh, to the gate where Matt walked in, I think, um, and uh, Rand uh, in season one. But it, uh, Moraine is there and she's looking at some place, probably looking at the White Tower. She is dressed in her blues. Now, the interesting thing about this is we know that Moraine was essentially banished. She was required to take an unbreakable oath in season one that she would never return, quote, home until uh, or unless summoned by Swan. Now, we also know that her and Swan had a big falling out at the end of season two. So why is Moraine in Tar Valen? It's a very good question to ask, but it looks like she's looking at the White Tower. She is dressed in her blues, so it's almost like she intends to go to the White Tower uh, dressed in this way. So has she been summoned back by Swan for some reason? Or uh, is she going to go ahead and find a way to break her oath? I don't think she can break her oath. So 
Um, this is going to be very interesting to see as to why she is in Tarval and possibly looking at the White Tower. Next, we have a shot of Rand. Remember, I told you there were there were going to be some images where Rand is experiencing other people's lives. And this may be one of those cases because he's dressed in very different clothing from anything that we've seen in the Wheel of Time present day. It does look much more like those Age of Legends clothings like we saw in the flashback with Luce Theron and uh, the Aes Sedai in season one or in uh, him and Ishi in, in the flashback in season two. I think this is from that kind of same time period. Rand's hair is different. Rafe has revealed, and this was at the CCXP um, and even before then, I believe, he said that there are several scenes where Rand is wearing prosthetics, where he's wearing different kind of makeup because he is actually experiencing these different lives. I believe this is one of these different lives from a time way back in the past. Our next shot is Lan. He looks intent. He looks mad. He looks ready to fight. Um, that's usually the way Lan looks. I'm just wondering if Daniel Henney is just mad because uh, he's in the desert, it looks like. So that means there's no trees for him to pee on. No, that's not it. Okay. Uh, he looks like he's about to square off with somebody. Although I think that if he was actually about to square off with somebody seriously, he wouldn't be just waiting around squaring up with him. He'd just go after him. So um, maybe it's some kind of training session because we do see some training stuff in future clips. Here is Leandrin. Now she is dressed in a much more sophisticated looking red sister shirt, uh, red sister garb than normal. It's got veils and all these other things. She's pulling the veil down. Uh, if you notice, all of the people in the background are in fact dressed very wildly. This is not Tarvalin. The, the architecture doesn't indicate anything Tarvalin. Um, it does kind of look like Carrion, but I suspect this is a location called Tanchico. Now, if you haven't read the books, Tanchico is a place that is um, kind of on the same side of the continent as Falma is, but a little further south and maybe a little further east as well, or maybe a little further west. I can't remember if, if uh, Tanchico is right on the ocean or not. Uh, but anyway, it's on that western side of the continent, but it is south of Falma where we were at for season two. And uh, this decor that everybody is wearing indicates to me that they might be in Tanchico here. Why is Leandrin here? What is she doing? Maybe some other shots in this trailer will tell us. We know that Leandrin has been revealed to be a dark friend, um, although I don't know if the rest of the world other than Nynaeve knows this, but that is the case for us as viewers. We know that she uh, is aligned with Lanfear and the dark. This next shot is of Elaine. She is putting on a crown. Now, remember, we've Elaine was revealed really basically in her introduction as the daughter heir to Andor. Andor is where the two rivers are located. So essentially, she would be uh, a princess or the heir to the throne that rules over where Land and Perrin and Nynaeve and Egwene are from. Uh, as she mentioned, she Egwene was her subject. But here she's actually putting on a crown. Now, does this mean that her mother has passed? Does this mean that her mother is missing? Must she now act as a queen? She's still in her novice garb, or maybe it's accepted guard. I can't really tell. But she is, uh, no, there's no, uh, there's no colorful bands on her wrists. So it is definitely still novice stuff. Um, there is something that we might consider. Uh, in regards to this shot. Maybe this isn't real at all. And the reason I say this is because we saw Nynaeve take an accepted test in season two. I believe it was episode three. And she went through several situations that may have been real on another plane of existence, so to speak, uh, but weren't real in pertaining to the world she was currently living in. Perhaps this is another one of those things. Remember that Elaine and Egwene have not yet taken their accepted tests. And we can tell that she is definitely in uh, her Aes Sedai uh, novice garb. And the window lattices and everything and the pillars all indicate that this is definitely in the White Tower. So why would she be wearing her crown in the White Tower? That makes no sense. So to me, the option is to go, well, maybe she's going through an accepted test. And this is uh, part of that. Speaking of the White Tower, we have a shot of the Amarlin seat. Now, 
it doesn't appear to me that Swan is the one who's sitting there because this Aes Sedai is all dressed in red. In fact, if we zoom in as close as we possibly can, and my images are not very high resolution, um, but I did get them courtesy of Omar uh, from WattSeries.com, who did a great job collecting all of the frames uh, for anybody to examine. Just check out Watt Series uh, on your social media sites, and they'll provide you with a link uh, for these images. Um, anyway, as I zoom in, this actually looks like it's um, Leandrin sitting on the Amerlin throne. And there is a person sitting to her right that I believe might be Lanfear or Egwene. I cannot tell which, um, but either of these, the fact that Leandrin is sitting on the throne indicates to me that this might be some kind of dream or something like that, especially if Lanfear is there because you know how much she likes to just walk in on people's dreams and say, hey, what's up? So perhaps uh, this is happening in a dream, uh, a dream where Leandrin is imagining herself as the Amaryland seat and Lanfear says, "Hey, uh, wake up! You got you got my uh, you got you got to serve me now." Uh, so perhaps that is what is happening there. Here is a shot of Moraine. She's in a different outfit from what we've seen her in in prior shots, and she is holding this globe, um, and it looks like she is channeling into it. Now, I believe I know what this item is. Uh, do you remember last season and the season before us talking about Terra Angrials and Sa Angrials and those kinds of things? I believe that this might be a very powerful Sa Angrial based on my knowledge from the books. I won't say anything further about it, but just imagine that it is a very powerful object. Remember that these kind of objects, they actually take the power that you put into them and uh, they make it stronger or they do something different with it. Uh, the arches that the girls walk through in uh, acceptance tests, those are Terra Angrials. Um, this particular one, it looks like Moraine is channeling into all by herself. Um, I believe that this is her channeling in based on the, the direction that the flows are going when we see the shot. On the other hand, the shot following that shows her, I think it's her, standing on a platform and holding that same object and all of the power going out of it. So the Terra Angrial or Sa Angrial are doing something with the power that she's giving it and spreading it across the world, it seems like. The flows are going everywhere. It's a beautiful shot, except for the fact that it's ruined by this banner of a quote from Vulture Magazine. It says, the Wheel of Time is blazing a new path for fantasy on television. So um, I don't know what the purpose of putting a quote on is probably at least six months old or older uh, because the Vulture hasn't written anything new of, about Wheel of Time, to my knowledge, um, in, in the recent weeks um, for them to have time to put it into the trailer. Uh, so um, why, why waste a beautiful shot? And it truly is a beautiful shot. It looks like that it's a drone shot done right at sunset or at sunrise. I'm not sure, but the sun is right on the horizon. Moraine's standing on this high rock and the flows are coming out of her. And the way that the shot moves, it's just shot beautifully. It's so epic. Love it. We next have, as I talked about, looks like an accepted test happening. This one for Egwene. She's standing there in her shift the same way that Nynaeve had to wear a shift for her acceptance test. And you have Leon and you have uh, Swan. And then some other Aes Sedai that I don't know uh, is uh, all channeling into what appears to be uh, the archway uh, that, of course, we saw Nynaeve have to walk through. This uh, appears to be Egwene's accepted test the same way that we saw Nynaeve's accepted test. The next shot is Moraine. She's just laying on the ground. It's barren ground, uh, not too unlike some of the areas that we've seen them in before that I think is the threefold land, the place where the Aiel live. Um, there's a whole range of mountains um, that separate where the Aiel live from the rest of where like people like Rand live. And I believe that this is inside, on the other side of what they call the spine, um, that she's just laying there intently she's wearing the same clothing that she was wearing when she's doing the uh 
thing with the Terra Angreal or Sound Angreal. So uh, it may be a connected scene or it may be before or after that happens. Um, it's almost like she's got her ear to the ground. Um, maybe she's trying to find the globe that she ends up using. Maybe that's it. Yeah. Uh, then an eyeball. And it's probably Moraine's eye. I'm going to say it's probably Moraine's eye. I love that light in that eye. It almost looks to me like a doorway. But it's just an eyeball. And I think it's Moraine's eyeball. Another shot of Moraine. Again, I think in the same clothing. This one, the sun appears to be in a similar position to where uh, it was when she was channeling all of the stuff out of the globe. So it's probably a connected shot in that way, maybe happening after, maybe happening between the time that she channeled into it and the time that she stood and it all channeled out. Uh, I love trailers because they give you great, powerful shots and they give you zero context. That's uh, what we do here is to try and give you context for some of these shots if you want it. Um, and again, our context isn't always correct. But uh, I think it's all connected to that globe shot. Here's a shot of, I believe it's Rand's uh, shoes. They're, he's dragging, his feet are dragging as he walks through this very bar barren uh, land here. The interesting thing is the light. The light is bluish, right? And you can almost see in the background uh, some columns or, or some poles or something like that. Um, but they appear to be kind of glass-like or crystalline um and they they appear to be a source of this bluish light so what is rand walking in through here and why is he dragging his feet i can tell you this um there are certain places in that first city that we saw in Ruridian that are very magical and with each step that you take in those places um something may happen that makes it even more difficult to move forward from there. And uh, this is probably why you saw all those spears. I told you that people from Meridian don't come out. Uh, the spears all left behind. Many people don't make it through walking these steps. Will Rand? We will have to see. I think he does. Our next shot is Nynaeve. It's really uh, only one of two shots that we get of Nynaeve. This one is her being more standardish. Um, the other one's really outrageous. We'll get to that towards the end of the teaser. But Nynaeve here, she's standing. She's, I'm assuming, in her accepted dress. Uh, it's clearly in the White Tower. I think I've seen those doors that are behind her before uh, in several scenes. And she's just standing there uh, looking intently. It's a very quick shot. I'm wondering if she's uh, actually waiting for Egwene to emerge from her accepted test. And the reason why I say that is because Nynaeve, of course, had a very traumatic accepted test. And so maybe she just wants to be there for Egwene. Or now she's had a great experience with Elaine. And if Elaine is having an accepted test with the crown thing, like I said before, maybe Nynaeve is waiting for Elaine. Or both of them. Or, you know, one or the other. I think they can only take one at a time. So uh, one or the other one, I think that she's probably waiting uh, for Egwene or Elaine to return from their accepted test. Uh, to be there for them. Because it is a traumatic experience, as Nynaeve well knows. Now, here is Egwene. Um, again, her hair, uh, as before, it's it's shorter. It got cut off uh, when she was a Damani. Uh, to the Shan Shan, uh, and uh, they cut off her braid, and, and now her hair is shorter. She's dressed very oddly. She is dressed um, not too much unlike some of those Aiel that we saw uh, in the first shot. Uh, the, the garb is very similar. Rand is just dressed like a schmuck, as Rand usually is. He's in the shot as well. They're looking at each other, and they look surprised. They're lying down on their backs on a carpet, and the carpet is a rug. The rug has snakes all over it. Um, the pillows have X's all over them. That may be a book nod. I'm not going to get into that right now, um, but they look surprised. They look surprised to even see each other. So what is happening here? Have they been pulled to another plane of existence, so to speak? What I mean by other planes of existence, just like the arches where you see possible situations that, I don't know, may or may not occur, um, is this one of those situations for Rand and Egwene? 
Um, or is it a place called Teleron Riyadh, which is kind of like the dream world, which I think we'll be learning a lot about this season. Moraine's hanging upside down again. She doesn't look like she has as much sand on her face, so maybe this is earlier in whatever kind of journey that she's going on. Again, these trippy kind of camera shots all indicate a place that isn't really real in the Wheel of Time world, but they might be real somewhere else. One of the things that I want to talk to you about right now, because it's going to be important to understand the context for some of these images coming up, is uh, some of the dialogue. Now, back in the Age of Legends scene, uh, or what I call the Age of Legends scene, uh, someone said uh, the world is changing uh, uh, during the ammo and seat thing. Somebody was saying, I don't know how deeply uh, rooted the shadow is here. Uh, but this is the important dialogue for the whole teaser. Maureen does a lot of talking in this teaser. And she says things like this that just break my heart. I have seen a thousand thousand futures. Remember that in the Wheel of Time, they don't have a word for millions. So a thousand thousand is a million. She's seen a million futures. Um, and then she goes on to say, as we're going to get into some of these next sequences, that in every one of them where I live, Rand dies. And in every one of them where Rand lives, I don't. Um, essentially, I'm paraphrasing there. But this is the type of doom and gloom thing that Moraine is going through. So when we see all of these kind of trippy camera moves where everything turns upside down and whatever, these are, the I think, the possible futures that she is seeing. But before we get into some of the doom and gloom, let's get into uh, one last shot that makes me very, very, very happy. And that one is this shot of Lan and Rand doing sword training together, doing sword forms together. Something that book readers wanted since uh, back to season one, really. They wanted to, to see Lan develop this kind of bond with Rand and the other Taviran uh, from Emmons Field, and especially the sword training with Rand, which would have been very important in that scene with Turok in season two, except for they just had uh, Rand do the Indiana Jones thing and uh, just blast Turok with the one power, uh, kind of like pulling a gun out instead of using a sword. Uh, but in the books, he actually fights Turok with the sword because he's received uh, sword training from Rand. Well, he hadn't done that in the show, so they had to do it a different way. Uh, so people have been clamoring for seeing Lan and Rand do some sword training together uh, for quite a while. And uh, this is the shot that shows it. I don't know who that is on the left. I suspect it's Moraine uh, just watching them. Uh, but I don't know for sure that that's Moraine. But there is someone on the left uh, that's blue. It's probably Moraine uh, watching the two of them. Now, I thought Rand's sword was actually destroyed when he killed Ishmael in season two. So this is can't be his original heron marked blade, right? Uh, it must be another. So we'll have to see where he got that sword from. But uh, yeah, him and Lan are doing some sword forms together. Let's continue. And this is where we're going to get into the kind of the doom and gloom of it pretty quick. This next shot is very interesting. I originally thought this was snow they were walking on, especially with the garb that the person on the left is wearing, who I can't really identify. Is that... Uh, the same person that we saw in the first shot, uh, the Ruark character that I referred to, is it someone else? Definitely Rand on the right, but it's actually sand, and they're actually walking up for what I th originally thought was trees, is now I can see our people, probably Aiel, because this is probably, again, the threefold land, uh, and they're approaching all of these people. That's a big army. That's a big army. That would be something to wield. They're the ones that gave every... Well, you saw how fierce Rand's mom was in season one. Uh, imagine if you had hundreds and hundreds of those. This is why I love the Aiel. This is why I love Avienda. This is why I love all things Aiel. The next shot uh, appears to be Rand and Moraine. 
uh, and they're talking to two people uh, who you can't really see. But what I am guessing is, is that these are women leaders. You know how Emmons Field has kind of a women's circle. Uh, the IEL have a group of people called the wise ones, and they're women. Um, you have wise ones who are the women, and then you have clan chiefs who are the men uh, in terms of the, the power structure, the organizational structure of the IEL. And it looks like they're talking to a couple of the wise ones in this particular shot. The next shot is of this great tree. And I don't know how to explain this to you other than to just tell you. Uh, this is Oven de Sora. And that is a Chora tree that sits in the middle of Ruidian. You could probably guess that with all the fog. Um, it looks like that there's a bunch of... Uh, kind of monuments around this tree. Avindasora is, uh, translates into the old tongue as the tree of life. Um, it is the last existing tree of its kind. It's supposed to bring great peace to a person, those kinds of things. But this is a big nod for book fans. Book fans absolutely love this shot all over the place, everywhere I saw. Avindasora sits at the kind of the center of uh, all of the artifacts and think about the glass columns that I talked about earlier. Um, it's kind of at the center of the city. It's the life giving force for the city in a way. Then we have Rand. Once again, it looks like he's walking through those crystal columns. Uh, you can always tell that these shots are connected because of the the lighting. The lighting has this bluish tint to it. Um, he looks a little distressed or very intent in this shot. Uh, I would imagine that walking through this area, especially by the way that he was dragging his feet, means that it's very difficult to get through. We're still continuing with the thing that I said about that Moraine says in, in terms of dialogue, and we're seeing a bunch of shots when she says things like, you know, every future where I live, she's seen a bunch of futures somehow. She basically did the Doctor Strange Avengers Infinity War thing, where she just kind of went through a whole bunch of futures, evidently, because we see them all here. And there are all these trippy camera flips and everything that tell you that these things aren't real, but they are possible is what the intention of everything turning upside down is. It's it kind of a perspective of Moraine's interpretation of the things that she sees. And in this one, uh, this first one, it looks like ran that wound where he got stabbed by Matt Spear in season two has reopened. Uh, there's actually a bloody sword right by it. So somebody's stabbed Rand or he stabbed himself or something like that. We have Moraine, and she's dressed up in a garb that um, looks very royal. Uh, again, the camera flips sh around to where everything always looks uh, strange or upside down. Um, so this particular one that I'm looking at right now is just a continuation of that after the camera flips over. Then we have Avienda. You can always tell by those chicken legs. It's Avienda uh, looking over the threefold land is my guess there, um, looking quite fierce as an IEL warrior. Love Avienda. Then we have Lanfear being Lanfear, the way that Lanfear is around Rand. Um, you know, Lanfear is crazy about Rand, so much to the point that she kind of foiled Ishmael's plan at the end of Season 2. Um, here, um, she looks like she's wanting to be back to uh, early Season 2, uh, Lanfear when she was Celine and just have her, her way with Rand, uh, you know, toying with him a little bit. And of course, Rand being Rand, whenever Lanfear's around, Rand will be Rand the way when uh, Celine is around because uh, he looks like he's enjoying uh, Lanfear's attention in this shot. We then have another shot of Lanfear. Not, not enough Lanfear. Remember that Lanfear's hair color or her hair length changes a lot during uh different times that we see her when she's in Teleron Riyadh her hair is shorter um when she was 
in Karian, her hair was longer. Here, she's got short hair. She's got on uh, her black as usual. It's not the same black leather, I don't think, that she had in season two that drove everybody crazy, that drove especially Matt, the innkeeper, um, Matt Hatch, from the Dusty Wheel crazy. He's a huge Lanfear freak. Um, I am too now. Uh, the television show has won me over. I'm not so much a Lanfear fan in the books, but uh, in the show, definitely Natasha O'Keefe uh, has turned that character into something just amazing. However, Lanfear's got ambitions, and it seems that Moraine is not part of those ambitions. She needs to get rid of her. And this is, again, uh, Moraine said, you know, either Rand dies or I die in all of these futures. But we, bo we don't both live. We don't both die. So now I think we're seeing more of these possible futures that Moraine was talking about. This one, uh, Moraine is in a very vulnerable position. It doesn't look like she's wearing any clothes. And Lanfear is on top of her. I wonder if this is uh, in this possible future, if it is that Lanfear has tricked Moraine into believing that she is uh, Swan. And she goes for Moraine's throat and uh, strangles her. Uh, it seems that uh, for Lanfear, uh, strangling is very sensual, <laughs> at least in this shot. And uh, she seems to go with that theme quite a bit. She's always going for the throat. Uh, I don't know what that says about Lanfear, but she's always going through the throat. Because in the next shot, uh, it looks like another possible future where Moraine is wearing her uh, wearing some bluish, isodyish kind of clothing. But Lanfear is strangling her again this time from behind uh because you got to do it in all the positions right so strangle you on top strangle you from behind um now this one uh maybe Lanfear's tired of strangling moraine uh this is definitely uh a possible future in tarvalin where moraine is getting her throat cut i may have to blur that out uh because it's so graphic um as she falls to the ground to the cobblestones uh, or to the streets of Tarvalin, uh, blood is just coming out of her. That's crazy. Um, again, because of these crazy upside down angles and all this stuff, um, even the shot before where Lanfear was strangling her from behind, the camera does all kinds of weird trippy moves, indicating uh, it's not necessarily real, but maybe possible. And uh, this next shot is actually. Moraine telling Lan the whole bit of dialogue that I alluded to earlier. Um, she says basically that for Rand to live, I have to die, um, which is very scary. Moraine is our main character. What's going on here? Um, much to consider there. Uh, surely there is some kind of solution that can allow uh, both of them to live, right? That's what we hope as fans. Next shot. Now, we haven't seen Alana be all powered up since season one, like the middle of season one when she was fighting Loghain's people. Remember how she was all powered up? Remember that the green Aja are kind of like the warring Aja. Um, they're the battle warriors. And here she's got uh, her powers working up. You see Maxim, her warder, on the left. And he looks pretty beat up already, so they must have been fighting for a while. And then the guy on the right is her other warder, Ivan. And you say, well, Matt, that's not the same dude uh, that's been playing Ivan for the first two seasons. And I say, you are absolutely correct. This is Anthony Kay who has taken over the role um, this time around uh, for season three. I'm not exactly sure why Emmanuel... Uh, decided not to do season three or maybe he just had other acting commitments, but I don't think they know the reason why uh, the role of Ivan was recast is known exactly. Anyway, they look like they're ready to go to town and Alana unleashes that power that we see her wielding in the prior shot. Um, and this is very reminiscent of the way she blew the ground up um, when she was fighting Loghain's army in season one uh this time she's just ripping up the cobblestones like crazy 
all of the CGI in, in this particular trailer is looking really good. I just love the way you see the one power actually affecting the physical medium, even though it probably is all CGI, but it's still, it just looks fantastic and it looks realistic. Love it. Now here is a shot of Rand using the one power and it looks like he's kind of uh, blowing up mirrors, all of the glass, all of the reflective surfaces. He's blowing them up. And in the shot, you can also see shadowy figures. So, to posit a theory, a book informed theory, nonetheless, but could some of these figures actually be uh, his reflections from all these glass surfaces brought to life? In the lower right, you can definitely see one of the figures um and they're all kind of dark or, but they're also kind of reflective so that makes me think that um these sources or the source of these people or creatures or whatever they are is from the reflective services and why rand is uh, blowing all of those surfaces out with his one power one other thing that is interesting is down here in the lower right, is there somebody in that bed? I can't really tell, um, but is this one reflective dude, I'll just call him, is he, uh, is he attacking someone who's on that bed, or am I just seeing things? Because, again, my resolution is terrible. Let me know. Leave comments in our YouTube videos, at Double P Media. Uh, is the YouTube channel, or you can reach out on all the socials at the word double, the letters PHQ. You can find me on Blue Sky now. Um, I will be still on Twitter until January 1st, but after that, I won't really be reachable there. Right now, I'm still reachable there at Bus Blockbuster, but you'll always be able to find me on Blue Sky, Matthew.Murdick on Blue Sky. So there you go. Um, yeah, great shot. And I think this is a callback to something from book three, but I won't say anything further here. Reminder, Priscilla and I will be breaking this down with a full book series spoiler uh, warning on front of it, where we'll talk about everything, what book it's from, what it means, and all of that stuff for you. But I'm trying to do this in this spoiler-free one, um, just so Bubba has a TV-only uh, perspective thing to listen to. When he has time, he doesn't have any time right now, which is why he's not here with me right now. But uh, he will have time in the near future. And hopefully, although he never does, he doesn't even take time to listen to my musical segments. Bad Bubba. Anyway, uh, it'll be up there on the YouTube uh, sometime this week. Now, this is a wonderful shot. Uh, it looks like there's Aiels up on this dais here, and there's two Aiel. Or there's two uh, people here in the foreground. One is wearing a, a really neat kind of black armor. He has these tattoos on his arm. I will tell you that those tattoos are important. I won't tell you why in this particular podcast. If you want to be spoiled, uh, check out mine and Priscilla's conversation coming out uh, within the next week or so. Uh, and Rand is there as well. So they are, uh, looks like they're being asked questions by this other group of Aiel who are up here on this dais. Um, and those look like, a lot of those look like wise ones because they're female. Um, however, there are a couple that may be clan chiefs. There may be a couple of males up there as well. A shot of Lanfear, given the sunlight and all of that stuff and the way Rand was looking up in the previous shot, is she actually in this shot? I don't think so. I don't think they're connected. Uh, but again, they love to edit those things in uh, for to try and throw off the context of everything. Um, but I'm not sure that Lanfear is actually at this place. This place, by the way, is called the Golden Bowl. That's all I'll say about that. And there's another shot of that Golden Bowl. Now you can see there are a bunch of Aiel up on that kind of platform, a bunch of wise ones. Um, and a bunch of Aiel on the other side, who are all looking over this place. You can see that Rand has now uh, removed his jacket. Can't really see much else about it. I will say 
that there is a poster that was also released that had Rand carrying Moraine, which is really a shot that we see from the end of this trailer as well. Um, but he also has tattoos on both of his arms when we see him in that photo or at the end of this uh, teaser. Um, so the fact that the other guy has tattoos, it must mean something, right? This dude uh, is probably a warder. Uh, I have suspect that this might be uh, one of Elaine's brothers, simply because I know that one of both of Elaine's brothers show up in the story at, uh, at some point. Um, but he is motioning for somebody to come on. So it's like he's challenging somebody to a fight. He's definitely at the White Tower. You can see some novices uh, all having, all making googly eyes at this guy's beautiful pecs um, and, and uh, probably cheering for him because he is a beautiful person. Um, maybe some Aes Sedai over here on the right who are also watching, um, just trying to check out uh, the new dude on, on the block. Um, so lots happening at the tower, uh, introductions of new characters and things like that. Um, I will say, uh, Gowan or Galad, that is uh, the character names that we're looking for. If you heard Bubba talking in our, uh, talk about the adaptation, um, he talked about how those two brothers are actually introduced, uh, in book one. Um, and we hadn't seen them yet in the series. I think we're seeing one of them now. Lan, again, this might be from the same shot that we had earlier uh, with him and Rand sword training because the terrain looks similar, clothes look similar, uh, and Lan always looks angry. I mean, if you were forced to just pee on a tree, if that was the highlight of your acting for season two, if I'm Daniel Haney, I'm going to look angry all the time too. I mean, Lan always looks angry. He even looks angry when he's with Nynaeve. So, I, I mean... What are you going to do? I think the only time he ever smiled was when he was with Naive. Maybe he smiled one time uh, with Moraine when she heated his bath up. But Rob. Ooh, I believe this is Perrin in this next shot. And he is forging an axe. It's kind of shaped like a half moon, uh, which for book readers will mean something. Uh, for you folks, just know that, uh, you know, Perrin wielded a pretty good axe at the end of season two. Did he not um, taking out uh, Daddy Bornhold and making uh, Son Bornhold Bornhold Junior making him quite angry? Um, so it looks like he's forging a new axe here. Uh, where's he forging it at? That's a good question. Um, it looks very much like his old his old stomping grounds in Emmons Field. We will see. Now we have Min. Min is one of my favorite characters in the books uh, because she's just uh, so tough on the outside and so fragile on the inside. That's that's one of the things that I love about Min. Um, here she looks a little panicked. She's in this great kind of a, almost like storeroom or something like that. I, You know, there's lots of storerooms in um, the White Tower as well, so she could be there, but she's dressed really weird. She's dressed very kind of exotically, almost kind of like the way we saw some of those uh, people being dressed in other shots where I think where Leandrin was at and what have you. And perhaps, perhaps she is in that same location. We call that place Tanchico. Uh, perhaps she is in a storeroom in Tanchico. There's all kinds of weird things here. There's taxidermy going on with goats, um, a hog's skull there, a wild Wild hog skull, skull there. All kinds of little items that I can't necessarily... An ashtray. No, I don't know what that is. Uh, and uh, But just all kinds of weird objects. Um, the weird kind of looking statue thing up on the shelf there. Um, we might consider that that might be something that men would be seeking. We don't know why she's there. We don't know what she's doing. There's very little context. That's what these trailers do. They just offer you very pleasing shots with very little context as to what they're about. So uh, I'm going to say it's Tanchico uh, and just leave it at that because I have no idea what's going on there, actually. Then we have Matt. 
And this is one of the few shots of Matt we get in this trailer. Uh, that was one of the few shots of men we get in this trailer. Rand and Moraine make up, you know, probably about 90% of this trailer and everything else uh, makes up the rest. And th this is the one shot of Matt. He looks really beat up here. He's got scarring all over his neck. Um, there's a strange light on his face as well. Now, based on the stones and everything here, I'm wondering if this is also um, the White Tower. But I could be completely wrong about that because I don't know enough about the iconography that um, these uh, production designers are using. Um, but it, it could be Tarvalon. It could be anywhere else. Uh, there is no context to this. Only that a light comes in on Matt's face from the right, uh, which could simply be a door opening where there's more light coming in. So who knows? This next shot. It looks like it's connected to the other shot of Leandrin. Uh, she's wearing kind of this veil thing here, I think. Or, or at very least, uh, she's all covered up in her hood. And we have Mogidian. Mogi. Mogi is one of my favorite Forsaken. I Double F. But uh, I, I can't explain why. <laughs> Not in this podcast, I can't, unfortunately. Uh, but I love Mogidian. She was absolutely fabulous in that last scene in Season 2 with Lanfear. So creepy. Leia Costa just knocked that scene out of the park. I got a feeling she's going to knock every scene out of the park uh, this season. And even Rafe, I think in an interview at CCXP, said he just really loves the way Leia Costa plays Mo Gideon. Uh, I will be calling her Mogi for short from now on because Mo Gideon's hard to say. Uh, and then sometimes I get, uh, well, you said it wrong. It should be Mo Gideon. And I'm like, I don't even know how to pronounce any of these names. Uh, so I give them nicknames. Ishmael is Ishi, Mo Mogadin is Mogi, uh, Grendal is, is Grinny. Uh, you know, so uh, just put an E on the at the end of the first syllable, and there's your forsaken for me. Uh, anyway, Leandrin uh, is getting a really crazy look from uh, from Mo Mogi there. So I, I love that shot. That was fabulous. Oh, it's time for the makeout section of the trailer. Here we've got Swan and Moraine kissing each other. And uh, it looks like they're in that little love shack that they, you know, they go walk through the Terangriol to get to. Uh, it's kind of like um, Swan's childhood home, almost kind of like a little place in, uh, in Tyr is where she's originally from. Remember the flashback of her as a child? It looks very similar to that. I think this is the same place where they made out in season one as well. Um, so they're doing a kiss there. Here's the thought that comes to mind. Remember that shot of Lanfear choking Moraine. Could Lanfear be fooling Moraine into thinking that she is Swan? And if they have made up, let's let's just look at it from that side. They were on bitter opposite sides at the end of season two. Was that all just a ruse uh, in order to fool the shadow? Or uh, have they made up? Let me know. Comments. YouTube. At Double P Media. Uh, at Double P HQ on all the socials. At Bus Blockbuster. Or Matthew.Murdick on Blue Sky. Matt's audio blog at gmail.com is an email too. Another makeout session. This one's Perrin. And he's with a girl. He's with a girl that's not his wife. Obviously, she's dead. Uh, because he fridged her as... Priscilla likes to remind us. And uh, not Egwene, because that's the only other person we've seen him really crush on. Uh, so who is this? I'm going to tell you her name. Fael is her name. Uh, and uh, this confirms the casting that we heard from John from What Up. I mean, back in August of 2023, he said this actress was going to be playing this person uh, that he had sources on. Absolutely right. Absolutely right, John. Once again, as usual. And oh my God, this shot. This shot caused a debate among the fandom for over 48 hours. It was hilarious. Elaine or Elaine? People didn't think it was Elaine. People thought it was Elaine. They debated respectfully back and forth for two days. And uh, I think they finally came to the answer that it is Elaine. So I'll just go with that. She certainly looks different. I think she's got Tanchico garb on, which makes sense with the book story that she's in. So we'll just keep it there.
Next shot is Egwene, and it looks like she's kind of standing in a very strange place. I, I'll, her, the camera shot of her in this particular shot also looks really weird. Now, it's not turning around upside down and anything like Moraine stuff, but it doesn't feel like it's like completely in the real world. Um, and there are places in the Wheel of Time uh, books where people travel to other planes of existence, so to speak. And I wonder if Egwene is doing that here. Um, I'll just describe one of those planes of existence. Teleron Riyad is one of those planes of existence. And I'm wondering if this is Egwene experiencing life on that plane of existence for a bit. Here's Rand. Oh, he's got a nice set of teeth. Again, it, it would, based on the lighting and what he's wearing, probably in that whole little path of, of crystal columns or glass columns or light or whatever, looks like it's from the same location. Um, he's screaming. He's upset. But his teeth are marvelous. Uh, and uh, here's an Aiel. Looks like he is with Rand's mother screaming as well. Remember that shot earlier on in the trailer where Rand looked like he had different hair? Check this out. This dude screaming in anger has similar teeth. Oh, wait, that's Yosha. Yes, that is Yosha in a beard with a prosthetic on, I believe, a prosthetic nose. That's Yosha. So what is Rand experiencing here? In the prior shot, he's screaming, and it feels like it's very much connected to this scream, which is also Rand. Well, it's Yosha, the actor, playing the guy who has found Rand's mom. Could this be Rand's dad who's found her body after Tam has taken Rand away? It's quite possible. This next shot, I mean, Leandrin and, and Alana are going at it. Still on Tarv the streets of Tarvalin. Uh, you saw Alana flinging cobblestones up, probably at, at Leandrin. Maybe some of them landed because Leandrin's looking really bloody. But Leandrin is taking it now, and she is putting all the one power up close, straight on Alana. Wow, this is going to be just an amazing fight. Uh, I don't know what it's about. Well, actually, I think I probably do. But uh, I'm not going to tell you here. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be an amazing display of the one power on the streets of Tower Valen. Oh, here's Perrin. He's also seemingly fighting people. He's all bloodied up. He's got some armor on. Um, as the shot continues, you can see that he's actually wielding that axe that we saw him forging earlier. Um, where could this be? It Since the other place was his old stomping grounds, could this be the two rivers? That looks that building looks familiar, like it's one of the inns or something like that in Emmons Field. Uh, could Perrin be going to war somewhere around Emmons Field for some reason? I think he might be. But you'll have to read the books to know for sure. This other person down here on the right, is that the girl that we saw Perrin kissing? Maybe. Maybe it's just a kid fighting, but uh, they're getting bit, pretty beat up as well. This is a bloody battle, folks. It's going to be a big one. Good to see Perrin have some action. Perrin got very little uh, the last two seasons, to be perfectly honest. I like him, but I think that people are really going to love him after season three. Here is Alana. Oh, my goodness. She is upset. She is crying over a body. I mean, Alana is always so calm, cool, and collected. Remember that scene with Egwene when she was just openly talking about sex? She doesn't let her emotions out like this. She does not let her emotions out like this. She must be really upset. Is it possible that one of her warders has died? Because you saw the experience of the one warder when he lost his Aes Sedai because of that bond connection that they have. Is the same the case for the Aes Sedai, when they lose a warder. Well, we saw that too in season two 
when the uh, yellow Aja, uh, yellow sister, lost her warder and how crazy she went with grief and anger. I think uh, what we've seen here is Alana losing one of her warders. I can't tell you which one based on the clothing. Perhaps Ivan? Perhaps Maxim? Let's flip a coin because uh, I just don't know. This is the money shot for the whole trailer for me. This next shot is actually glorious. It, it's kind of like it's in the ways, but it's got to be one of Maureen's alternate futures because she's got short hair. She's obviously not faring well because she's all bloody. She also knows that Rand is still alive because Rand is there on the wrong side. Look at that. That's Rand on the right. That's Egwene right next to him. Look at how these girls are decked out. Egwene and Nynaeve just gothing it up. Oh, my goodness. They've all, they're all dark friends. They're all chosen in this alternate reality. Rand, Egwene, to the left of her, Nynaeve. You got Lanfear in the middle because Lanfear's always holding the knife. Uh, going for the throat, although this time it looks like she missed and hit the shoulder. Uh, you've got Matt. He's got the dagger with him. Oh, my. Matt got a costume change. Finally, two seasons. There's Matt with a new costume. Actually, he might have had a new costume in the prior shot also. Couldn't really tell for the lighting. Uh, but, yeah, man, that looks just crazy. Looks great. Although he did have a, a different costume in Nynaeve. Maybe Matt only gets to change clothes when he's in some kind of alternate reality. Because the only other time we've seen him in other clothes is when he was in Nynaeve's acceptance test. Maybe that maybe that's a stipulation for Matt. Um, then you have Elaine. Whoa, look at Elaine. They are all so decked out. And Perrin is on the left. He's holding his axe. And then I can't tell who that is exactly in the back. I don't think that's I don't think that's the girl that Perrin was kissing. Could that be Mogi in the background as well? That could be Mogi back there. So what a wonderful shot. Obviously. There's more camera flipping and all that stuff, so we know it's just a possibility, not actually happening. But I think here's what happened. Everybody saw how awesome Natasha O'Keefe's costumes were. And, you know, the strike was starting to happen as they were filming season three. And they all said, look, strike issues are no strike issues. We're not showing up for work ever again until we get costumes like Natasha's. And Rafe said, okay, we'll make it an alternate reality. We'll just do it like that. Off to the way set. Let's film this. Amazing. They just, that just tickles the crap out of me and much of the fandom as well. And then here is the final shot that I have for the trailer. Uh, it is Rand and it looks like he's carrying Moraine. She's still got all that sand and stuff like she had on her face when she was hanging upside down. Um, she looks very beat up. She's kind of passed out. And Rand is uh, carrying her. Uh, where he's carrying her to, I don't know. But I suspect he's carrying her out of that foggy place, wherever it is in relation to uh, where they are in this shot. Um, notice that the sun is rising. Or setting. But I think rising. Over Rand's right shoulder. Book readers will notice that reference. He who comes with the dawn. So, uh, excellent, excellent trailer. What are your thoughts about the trailer? Please let me know. At Bus Blockbuster on Twitter until January 1st. You can send emails to mattsaudioblog at gmail.com. You can uh, also tweet to my bosses. At Double PHQ across all social media, actually. Just at Double PHQ everywhere except OnlyFans. Um, and you can comment on the YouTube videos as well. YouTube.com slash at the word double, the letter P, the word media. This has been Matt. I really enjoyed this trailer. It made me excited for season three. All the trailers always, I, that's the thing about trailers is they give you all of these great shots and they give you zero context for any of it. And it's up to people like, you know, John from What Up and Lauren from Unraveling the Pattern. And I guess to a small extent, me to explain to you what the context is, except that in a spoiler-free context, it's really hard for me to do that. It really is. So hopefully um, you'll have read the books and then you'll come back for mine and Priscilla's review 
coming up very soon, which will be full spoilers uh, so that we can talk about everything. So I can really geek out as a fan. Anyway, thanks for sticking around. This has been Matt.